All right, he lives, he lives. 377, 377 in your songbooks. Please stand, let's go ahead and sing tonight. He lives, he lives. Amen, amen, let's sing, let's sing. 377. I see your is in sing.
Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the great privilege to be in a new year. And we thank you for allowing us to uh, continue on this side of the, uh, glory for your, for your honor and, uh, and for your praise into this new year. I pray God you bless us this year. Help us. Uh, help us to get closer to you than we've ever been before. Uh, help us to uh, put you uh, in that first place that you deserve. Uh, help us to give you that priority in our life. And Father, help us to be more others-minded than we've ever than we ever have before. And uh, Father, we just we just thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do in our lives this year, what you're going to do in our church uh, this year. I pray, God, as we uh, as we begin this evening service, this Wednesday night service. Lord, we ask that you please meet with us in a special way this, this during this midweek uh, opportunity to get together. And I pray, Father, that as we uh, as we spend a little bit of time uh, with prayer requests and rejoicing, uh, that we'd be encouraged through that time. We'd edify one another in that in that time of rejoicing. And uh, also, Lord, I pray that as we uh, hear from your word, I pray that we'd all get exactly what we need considering this fifth chapter of uh, 1 Thessalonians. So we just want to thank you in advance for what you're going to do tonight. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You all may be seated. 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse number 1. The Bible says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape, but but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us sleep, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. So uh, in our last study a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, as we, uh, as we uh, move through these holiday seasons, of course, some of our services, they kind of get geared around our Christmas time. Of course, we last Wednesday was Christmas Day, amen? So we were uh, celebrating uh, the Savior's birth and, and uh, talking about that in, in Scripture and enjoying some time uh, as, we, as we considered the Savior's birth last Wednesday. Um, and so but the week before that, I believe, we were here on a normal, regular Wednesday night and looking at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. And so our last study, the Apostle Paul, he dealt with the comfort, he dealt with the assurance uh, of the rapture uh, of the church, and, uh, and that, of course, that includes all of those who have been born again, all of those who have trusted the Lord as Savior, living and dead alike, and uh, we won't go into that because we talked about that a couple weeks ago, uh, but now he turns his attention to the day of the Lord. Now, uh, I think it's clear that, uh, that after, the, uh, the, after, the Apostle's, after the Apostle Paul's uh, departure, some questions arose uh, within the church of Thessalonica there concerning the rapture and concerning the second coming, the day of the Lord. Uh, and as we found in chapter number 3, the Apostle Paul, he sent Timothy to spread some, uh, spend some time there with the church. Uh, and it's, it's quite possible that, uh, that when he had returned to the Apostle Paul, maybe he shared, maybe he was the one that shared some of them concerns with him. Uh, we don't know, but either way, he was able to, he, he somehow was able to get an understanding, maybe it was just 100% uh, leading in direction of the Holy Spirit of God, uh, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, for whatever reason, uh, he realized uh, that, uh, that the church there in Thessalonica uh, had some questions, it had some concerns uh, about the rapture and the coming of the Lord. So but we know that the Apostle Paul had already addressed these issues within the church of Thessalonica uh, because he again deals with this uh, in, in the opening verses of, of uh, 2 Thessalonians in chapter number 2, verses 1 through 5. Uh, the, the words uh, that, the, that the Apostle Paul sends to Thessalonica uh, they're not a they're not a complete uh, theological examination of the second coming uh, of the Lord, but they're just a, they're a, they're a, uh, a pastoral address, if you will, to just kind of settle them and to give them some guidance and to give them some direction as they look toward that day. He, he's not dealing as, as much with all of the particular events of the second coming uh, as as he is uh, with the state of affairs upon the earth at that time. Uh, it's I, I, like I said the, in, uh, before we start reading scripture. Uh, it's in this passage of scripture that we find some of the great support, some of the clearest support for the doctrine 
of the pre-tribulation rapture is because chapter 4 and chapter 5 we see those two very distinct and separate events, one being the rapture of the church and the second being the day uh, of the Lord. And uh, uh, the, the, let's see here, uh, the rapture uh, of the redeemed, it's, that of course, as we, I, I believe this with all my heart, I know there's some others that believe differently, but I believe it's going to come before the tribulation and precede the tribulation. And then after the church is taken away, uh, after the Holy Spirit of God is removed from the capacity that he is serving in this moment, uh, the events of the day of the Lord, uh, the great tribulation will begin, and they will do so in a rapid succession. And they're all going to come to a conclusion, or they're all going to culminate with that return of Christ to judge the world, to judge Satan, to establish his throne for that millennial reign. We talked about that uh, within the year, within this last year as we looked at our Revelation study. And so with the gracious enabling of the Lord tonight, I'd just like to take a few moments to consider the issues that the Apostle Paul deals with here in these few verses we just read. As I preach on this thought for just a little bit, what an exciting thought to start the new year. The King is coming. Amen. The King is coming. The first thing we see in verse 1 through 3 is we see the return of the Savior. So in these verses, verses 1 through 3, the Apostle Paul is dealing with, as we're just making sure, we're, just, we're trying to be very clear, very distinct about these two separate uh, separate uh, events, okay? Uh, he's, we, he is talking about the second coming uh, of the Lord. It is separate, completely separate uh, event from the rapture. During the rapture, as we understand in Scripture, Jesus will appear in the clouds. He will not touch this earth. Uh, at that time, but during the day of the Lord, he will uh, he will actually return bodily to the earth. Okay, uh, the day of the Lord is spoken of many times in Scripture. I'm going to give you some of the references. I should have left them in the notes. I didn't. I apologize uh, for that thinking. Now I should have put them, uh, left them in that outline there. Uh, but it's referred to 19 times in the Old Testament. We see it once in Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 12. Uh, we see it in Isaiah chapter 13, verses 6 and verse 9. We see it in Ezekiel chapter 13 and verse 5. Uh, we see it in Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 3. Uh, Joel, we see it in chapter 1, verse 15. Chapter 2 and verse number 1. We see it in chapter 2 and verse number 11 and verse 31. And we see it also in Joel chapter number 3 and verse number 14. We find it in Amos chapter number 5 and verse number 18. We find it two times in that, uh, in that one verse uh, and then in verse number 20 as well. Uh, and then we see it in Obadiah uh, in uh, chapter number, or in verse number 15. Uh, chapter number 15 of Obadiah, turn there for a minute. Um, and then we see it also in uh, uh, Zephaniah, chapter number 1, verse number 7. And uh, verse number 14, we find, it in, we find it referred to two different times. And then in Zechariah, we find it uh, in uh, uh, chapter 14, verse number 1. And Malachi, we find it in uh, chapter 4 and verse number 5. It's also re referred to uh, four different times in the New Testament. We find it in Acts chapter number 2, verse 20. Uh, we find it here, of course, in uh, verse number 2 of our text. And we find it in 2 Thessalonians. Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 2 and uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. I hope that you wrote down some of them. Uh, interesting study to go back through and just read what every single one of them. We don't have time to exhaust all that scripture today, uh, but just kind of covering some grounds and building a little bit of foundation here as we, as we consider this point here. The day of the Lord is spoken of many times uh, in scripture. But think about for just a minute what we can find about his coming, at least in relation to this passage of scripture, and how we are to uh, anticipate uh, the coming of the Lord. Uh, we, in verse number one, we see the, the expectation of Jesus' return. We see the expectation of Jesus' return. It says, but of the times and, and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. So the Apostle Paul, he speaks of the times and the seasons prior to the Lord's return. And, and in this verse, he really, what he does, he reveals that there's really no need for him to devote time uh, to that. I think one of the reasons is because it's already been extensively dealt with in the Old Testament, those scriptures that I just gave you, uh, and also in the Gospels. Uh, and I think another reason is because no man knows the time. No man knows the day. No man knows the hour. And, and so it's really foolish for us uh, to be living seeking signs and predictions. Right. Amen. Uh, we are to live in anticipation, uh, but nobody knows. Nobody knows. Uh, he speaks of times that men looked. Uh, 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 speaks of times that men looked for or looked toward. Uh, this is uh, this is from the Greek word chronos, or it deals with chronological time, clock, calendar time. Uh, he also deals with seasons. He talks about the seasons, uh, and that's from the Greek word uh, keros. Uh, it deals with the, the events or eras or seasons as well. So two different and distinct indicators uh, that men look toward 
uh, to estimate the Lord's coming. He deals with the times and the seasons. Now, the Apostle Paul, he declared that there's no need to in, in, invest uh, large amounts of time, or their time at all, really, in such desires, uh, but to live every day in full expectation and full anticipation that he's coming. He is coming back. Amen? Uh, clearly, God's people today uh, ought to live in, in, with expectation. Amen? They ought to live uh, in, in an earnest anticipation that the Lord will return someday. Amen? It's not a myth. It's not a fairy tale. Amen? It's not something that, that may one day happen. Amen? If the Lord decides uh, along the way that that's what He'd like to do. Amen? The Lord will come uh, for the church uh, and, and will rapture His redeemed out of this world. Out of this world. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, there, and He will come back. Uh, and and, uh, and the, the day of the Lord will uh, come. Amen? Are we living, the question we ask ourselves and challenge tonight is, are we living with that expectation? Uh, did, did you wake up this morning, I mean, this is the first day of the year, uh, the first day of the new year, did we wake up this morning thinking and planning our day, and maybe even planning our year with the anticipation that today or this year could be uh, the time that the Lord returns to bring us home? Uh, and so we see... The, the expectation of, of, of Jesus' return. We also see the, the imminence of Jesus' return. The imminence. Uh, look at verse number 2. It says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Amen? And the Apostle Paul reminds us, I think this is very important for us to understand as we're making the argument of not looking towards the signs and the times as much as just making our lifestyle about living in anticipation of the Savior's return. He makes the argument here and reminds them of the fact that Jesus... Uh, the, the fact that Jesus spoke of himself here, the Lord will come as a thief in the night, uh, at a time when no man knows, no man's uh, necessarily expecting it date-wise, uh, it, it could happen any moment, amen? We say this, and I, I think sometimes we allow it to become cliche, but the reality of the matter is, is before we finally say the final amen uh, for our evening service, the Lord could return, amen? amen? The trumpet could sound, and we could be raptured out of here, amen? Listen, uh, the, the, the world won't be ready uh, or prepared for that day when it comes, but it could happen at any moment. And as I, as I looked at this passage of Scripture, I was reminded about how, how close, think about this for just a minute, how close uh, we really could be to the Lord's return, amen, for the Lord's return in the rapture, uh, for the, the starting, uh, the ushering in of the great tribulation upon the earth. But think about this for just a minute. In the prophetic calendar, there isn't one thing that needs to happen before the Lord's return. That's right. I mean, there's absolutely nothing else that we're waiting on prophetically before the Lord's return. See, a lot of folks, when they were preaching before the 1940s, they were waiting still for uh, some of those decisions that were made in, in, in the 40s in regards to Israel becoming a state. Uh, but that was that last, uh, one of the last prophetic uh, uh, events, calendar events that needed to happen. And as that fell into place, uh, really, we're just, we're just waiting on His timing now. Amen. There's nothing else that we're waiting for before He comes. When He comes uh, and, and brings us home, judgment will begin. Tribulation uh, begins. Uh, so we see not only do we see the, the, the expectation of Jesus' return and the imminence uh, of Jesus' return, but we also see the indifference towards Jesus' return. Look at verse number 3. It says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So in this verse, we, we, what we do is we see, the, we see the attitude of mankind in that day. Amen? Notice the, the use of the pro pronoun there, they. Uh, he speaks of those who are left upon the earth after the rapture. All right? Uh, they are indifferent. Those that are left after the rapture, they're indifferent to his coming, and they are not looking forward. For it. Think about think about man's delusion there, that first part of verse number three. Man, look at man is man is delusional in this passage of scripture. We see that, that the Apostle Paul is, is, is saying that man is delusional about the return of the Lord. That they, they do not want to accept the fact that he's coming again. Amen. Uh, they, they, they give no thought, they don't give any care, uh, they don't they don't give any accountability uh, to holy God. Amen. Uh, with the return of Christ at hand, the world will continue down their delusional path. Uh, denying reality. Denying the, the prophesying. Uh, the, the denying God's plan for future events. Listen, aren't we experiencing that exact same thing in our day? I had to read this. I was, trying, I was praying, Lord, let me, let me get a, let me 
find a place to, uh, to, to read this verse tonight, and I, I believe he's just given me the, the piece to do that. I think this will fit really well where we're at. Turn your Bibles back to Malachi chapter number 2. Think about this verse for just a minute. This is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk much about it, but I just thought this would be something we something for you to look at and maybe read into a little further. But I just thought it was an interesting verse. Verse number seven, seventeen, Malachi chapter number two, verse seventeen. It says, "Ye have wearied the Lord with your words." And I know this is talking about Israel, but but think about the parallel. Think about the application in our day. It says, "Yet ye say, where have we wearied him?" Listen to this. When ye say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them, or where he is the God of judgment. How much, how much of that is going on in our day? Oh, yeah. how, much, how much of, uh, I mean, we, we've got, we've got uh, a fellow running for president who says that, that, uh, uh, that it is, it's okay to be a Christian and be a homosexual. I mean, that's, that is exactly what I think. That's exactly what that scripture is talking about. Those that say that what is evil is good. Those things that say, listen, that person is living wickedly uh, and, and immorally. Uh, but they're, but you know what? I love them. And so really it just doesn't matter about the actual behavior. They're wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tough thing. Listen, we're, I think we're exp experiencing that delusional attitude in our day. I mean, uh, the, the, the world continues to live as it pleases. They are living uh, as a, with, very humanistic in their decisions. Uh, they, they, uh, are, they're believing a lie. They, they, they're living and their behavior testifies that they believe the lie that nothing, uh, nothing uh, could ever uh, prevent or hinder their prosperity. They, they refuse to hear the word of God. They refuse to turn from their wicked ways. They refuse to, to, to trust the Lord. Uh, we're, we're seeing, what we're, what we're seeing right now really uh, is the prophecy that our Lord gave, uh, that our Lord gave being fulfilled uh, in our generation. Matthew chapter number 24, 37 through, through 38. The Bible says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day of Noah entered into the ark. And uh, we certainly see that. Now remember, there's two, two distinct events. There's the, the rapture and there's the coming of the Lord. But they, they although they're distinct, they're, they're not, uh, they're not uh, far off in timeline. The Lord comes back and gets his church. Uh, and then the day of the Lord starts, tribulation time uh, starts, and that seven years of great tribulation uh, begins at that point. And so we see that although that there's some signs for the uh, tribulation of the day of the Lord, and not necessarily signs for the rapture, because they're so close together, we can see we've got to be very close. And, and uh, men, uh, mankind is very delusional right now. We, don't, we see not only uh, as we're con considering their indifference, we see their delusion, uh, but we also see men's destruction. Uh, look at that last part of verse number three. Uh, think about that last part of verse number three there. And it says, uh, uh, and then sudden destruction uh, cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. The mankind, they may deny the Lord's return, and they may continue to live as they please. Uh, they may continue to live as if there is no end and there is no judgment. But one day the Lord will bring swift, and can I say unrelenting, judgment upon the wicked. Uh, and I'm not saying that with a smile on my face. I'm not excited or joyful uh, that man will spend eternity in hell. I want to see them get born again. Uh, but at the same time, I can say with confidence uh, that, that uh, although they can deny it all they want, someday destruction will come. And their destruction will be swift, uh, and they will not be able to escape from it. When the Lord begins to pour out His wrath, uh, and when He begins to pour out His judgment upon the earth, there will be no escape. There will, no be, there will be no place to hide. There will be no, no place to avoid uh, the destruction that will come. We find that supported as well in Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. And we're not going to... Uh, we're not going to look at that for a sake of time. So we see the return of the saved. And then number two, we see uh, the reflection of the saints. Looking at these last few verses that we read uh, this evening, verses 4 through 7. These verses, the Apostle Paul, he, he goes on to further encourage, uh, further enlighten uh, the church of Thessalonica there about the coming of the Lord. Uh, these, these, these words, I believe, 
Although they were meant and, uh, and intended initially for that church of Thessalonica, uh, be, because we're in a day of, of grace, uh, this is, they are meant for our encouragement. They're meant to be applied to us as well. Think about that first thought there, in, uh, first part of verse number four. Notice our association. Our association. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Amen? Our association. He, he again reminds us, we've, we've talked about this over and over again uh, as we've studied through this book of 1 Thessalonians. Uh, the Apostle Paul is con in, in continually to re continuously reminding them uh, of their association with Christ. Amen. Uh, they are brethren. They're not of the world. Amen. These folks that he is that he is encouraging, that he is trying to enlighten, that he's trying to be a blessing to, uh, they are not of the world. Uh, those who are unsaved, they will be left to face the wrath of God, but the church, the born again believers, the church as it's completed, will be caught away to the presence of the Lord. Amen? And they were worried about, they were, they were worried a lot about the day of the Lord, uh, but, but, uh, but uh, they, they, they had failed to realize uh, their relationship with Christ, amen? They failed to realize the size of the benefit that's given uh, and the blessing that comes along with being a born-again believer, amen? Uh, the Apostle Paul also reminds them, and I want you to think about that for just a minute. Listen, uh, something that ought to be able to encourage us uh, in, in, in a moment uh, is the wonderful truth that if you're saved today, uh, you are secure in Christ uh, and, and we will be protected and saved from wrath. Amen? Amen? We will not have to go through that seven years of tribulation. Amen? We are protected. Some folks will say, oh, the wrath don't start till halfway point. Dear friend, uh, even though the uh, I, I understand their argument there, uh, when that tribulation start, although the wrath had the, 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 the uh, Wrath as defined in Scripture is not necessarily poured out to that halfway point. I promise you that those first half of that, that first half of the tribulation, that first three and a half years of the tribulation uh, will be like hell on earth. It will be uh, wrathful. It will be horrible. Uh, and oh, I'm praising God tonight. I won't be here for it. Amen. Amen. And if you're born again, you won't be here. That ought to encourage us today. Amen. Every time you see that word brethren, I'll put a smile on. Amen. I'll put a little joy in your heart. Brethren. Amen. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And you know, I think we get away from that in our day. It sounds so old-fashioned to say, hey, brother, so-and-so. And listen, maybe maybe you don't do it for the sake of, maybe you don't, don't feel like you have to do it for a, because you have to respect, especially somebody maybe younger than you. And don't do it for that reason. Listen, I call you all brother because I'm excited that you're my brother. Amen. Amen. I call you all sister because I'm excited that you're my sister in Christ. Amen. Uh, it's a blessing. We're brethren. Hallelujah. We're brethren. Oh, what a blessing. We see not only... Not only there, but the apostle also reminds them uh, that they're not in darkness. Hey, not only are we saved, not only are we are we are we secure in Christ, and we're going to escape this wrath, and we're going to escape, escape this day of judgment uh, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. But he, he also reminds them that they're not in darkness. Look, they maybe didn't understand all that the Lord would do at His coming, uh, uh, but they were not ignorant of it either. Amen. They had the Word of God to guide them. Uh, they, they had the assistance or the assurance of the Holy Spirit of God that would illuminate the pages of the Bible uh, so that their minds uh, could, uh, could be able to uh, enjoy the guidance and the direction of Scripture. Amen? Listen, I am excited about this wonderful truth today. I'm glad today we don't walk in darkness. Amen? Listen, I'll be the first to admit I don't have a clue. I don't have a... I can't comprehend. I do have a clue. But I can't comprehend all uh, that God is. And I certainly can't, uh, can't uh, uh, comprehend all that He does or His will uh, fully. Amen? I certainly don't fully understand all that's going to transpire, transpire during the tribulation period. But I, I have been born again. Amen. amen. I am saved, and I do walk in the light uh, of Scripture. Amen. I have the assurance of eternal life, and I do know that my Lord loves me. And really, that's all I need to know, but I also get an opportunity to study the Word of God and find out even some more details uh, as we go along. Amen. He will care for me all the way. If you're saved today, He will care for you all the way. And that's something we can be excited about. Amen. And so we see not only our association, but that second part of verse number four, we see our anticipation. Uh, it says, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness. And listen to this last part. It says that the day should overtake you as a thief. Now, the Apostle Paul, he's not referring to the day of the Lord overtaking them because they will, they will be raptured prior to that. Okay? Uh, but he is revealing that their lives ought to be lived in anticipation of the Lord's coming. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they should know enough scripture to be able to see the things 
lining up. One of the studies that I have in my office right now, when you're studying the rapture versus the day of the Lord, one of the things, not only is it revealed in Scripture to be two distinct events, uh, the rapture does not have anything in Scripture as being a distinct precursor to the rapture. There's no uh, evidences saying, all right, just before the rapture, this is going to take place. But the day of the Lord has uh, has some evidences that the day of the Lord is coming. Now, of course, they're coming, they're, they're so close together in time that as a Christian, although we won't be here for the day of the Lord, we'll be in glory for that, we won't have to experience the seven years tribulation. We can anticipate and we can have some discernment about the time around us and know that it's got to be close. Right. Amen. It's got to be close. Uh, listen, I, I, I'm amazed, though. I am amazed by all the predictions that have been made uh, over the last several years about the Lord's return. I, it's, a, it's, a, it's pretty wild. I remember there's a fellow in our church that I'm not going to, it's being recorded, so I'm not going to go into details in case somebody gets offended by that. Church, I got saved at, though. There's a, there a fellow there, and, and uh, he was, he, you know, he was an odd fellow. Uh, but uh, I remember he was talking about a, a bunker that he had prepared, and that it was sometime in October and that the Lord was coming back, and he was just confident about it. I mean, he just swore up and down, and we never saw him again before that October. Uh, and when we bumped into him at Walmart about three weeks after the predicted date, uh, and uh, he was still here. So, but it's, it's just crazy how many folks predict that uh, and say with confidence. And, uh, I mean, whole religions and faiths have gotten themselves in a lot of trouble uh, over that. Uh, but, uh, listen, we have no way of predicting his coming. We don't know when his coming is going to be. Listen, we understand some of the evidence of the behaviors, but we don't. We, we, have, we have scripture reference to the days of Noah uh, and, and, and what it certainly entailed, but we weren't there living firsthand, so we don't know how wicked it actually got before that rain started falling. Amen. And so we, we don't we don't know. Well, there's no way of predicting the exact time. It's got to be close. Amen. But it also it shouldn't surprise us if it were today. And that's right. the idea that we got to get here. Okay. It's not. It shouldn't come upon us like that. Actually, listen. We should be living every single day expecting the Lord's return uh, for us. And then we see our allegiance here in verse number five. He says, "You are all the children of light and the children of the day. But we are not of the night nor of darkness." Amen. The world around them, there in first in the Thessalonica, the world around them was filled with darkness, and those who lived according to the lust of the flesh, uh, they were they were all around, amen. And those who, who uh, lived with no reflection of the Lord, no no uh, uh, consideration for His coming, no anticipation of His coming. Uh, listen, the the church there in Thessalonica, they were not of the world, amen. They were of the light, amen. They were of the day. They had been born again into the glorious light of Jesus Christ. Uh, he was their source uh, of their strength. He was their comfort. Uh, he was their stay. Listen, even if others denied His coming, uh, the church, that church in Thessalonica and us today, amen, we're to live, uh, in, live a life that honored the Lord and expected His return. Amen. Our right. behavior ought to reflect our anticipation for the Lord's return. Amen. We're children of the light. Listen, I understand in our day that it's not popular preaching to preach holiness. I understand in our day it doesn't make folks happy to say that there's some boundaries and there's some things that God's people ought to avoid and God's people ought to stay away from. Listen, I understand it's not popular popular preaching today to, to say that there are some things that are abominable in the sight of God. There are some things that are wicked. There is still a such thing as sin in this day. Amen. We can't we don't we can't just name it, claim it, and, and move on and just uh, just because it feels right. Listen, our feelings. Feelings ought to never dictate our behavior and the way we live uh, because we'll get in trouble every single time uh, that way, amen? Uh, we, we, we must understand that there is an absolute. I know it's not popular preaching to say that this Bible is absolute truth. Oh, but dear brothers and sisters, today, this is truth, amen? This is absolute truth. It's, it hasn't changed. It's not going to change. Uh, it is going to, the Bible testifies that it is for, forever settled in heaven, amen? And we can have a confidence today uh, that... Uh, even though it might not be popular, God still has an expectation for His people in this day, amen? Uh, and even if others deny it, uh, still I will follow, amen? And, and, and you all have, we, all have to, we all have to have that mentality and, uh, and that burden in our heart. We see also our awareness. Look at verses uh, number 6 and verse 7. Uh, therefore, the Bible says in verse 6, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Verse 7 says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night. But they, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. So, another reminder, another reminder uh, uh, of our obligation 
to live for the Lord and, and to be looking for Him. Amen? The world lives in darkness. The world lives in darkness. The world desires darkness over light. We see that testified of in Scripture, and we see it practically in real life. Amen? Uh, the church uh, was not the church there in Thessalonica, those early churches in the local New Testament, that first century, and all through the ages, God's people uh, were not to be consumed with the desires of the flesh. That is still applicable today. Amen? It hasn't changed. Uh, regardless of the seeker-sensitive, regardless of the majority's uh, feelings, uh, we are not to be consumed with the desires of the flesh. Uh, we are we are admonished. The Church of Thessalonica was in, um, admonished. We are uh, in 2000 or 22 to almost 2019. Uh, New Year's re resolution is I don't want to sign or say 2019 when I'm supposed to be talking about 2020. Amen. Uh, they, they, we're admonished. Uh, to watch and be sober. Amen? Uh, that means that, that, that we ought to be alert. We ought to be on guard. Uh, ought to be constantly looking for the Lord to come. Uh, their, their lives in Thessalonica, their lives were to, to be lived with a, with a, with a discipline. Amen? Uh, they were to live in purity. They were to live in righteousness. And listen, <clears throat> I tell you, uh, it hasn't changed. Society has changed. Culture has certainly changed. But the Bible has not, and God's expectation for those that belong to Him by way of the cross has not changed either. Amen? He still expects us to be watching today. Amen? You think about these early churches. They were living with full confidence, uh, and, and, and they, were, they were living, uh, they had a testimony of living their lives each and every day as if the Lord could return back then 2,000 years ago. Right. 1,900 years ago. 1,800 years ago. Amen. And those early born, those early born again believers, those first few centuries, as they were going through, they were going through some some tough, some difficult times. Really, all through the dark ages, uh, God's people that, that refused to uh, refused to walk in step with the Catholic Church and and, and wanted to uh, worship God the way the Bible teaches, <clears throat> were, were were tortured, were persecuted uh, for their faith in Christ. And listen, all throughout that, they were looking for the Savior's return. Hey man, listen, in 2020, we don't have the persecution, at least in America, that they, that they did in those early churches. Uh, we should still be looking, even more so, we should be looking uh, for the Lord's return. It's certainly closer today than it was back in Thessalonica. Amen? Uh, but we should be living in anticipation just as, as they were. But I, I'm, I'm concerned, though, I think sometimes, sometimes we've, we have, we have allowed it, the, the, the thought of the Lord's return to become cliché. Yeah. We've gotten kind of numb to it. Like, yeah, I'll preach it's another Lord's return message. Yeah, that yeah, sounds good. Uh, listen, the, 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 we have to be convinced. Uh, we have to be convinced and we have to, we have to uh, be watching uh, with, in, in sobriety today um, for the Lord's return. Amen. When the Lord returns for the redeemed, those who are left, those who are left will face uh, the horrors of God's judgment. We need, to be, we need to consider that encourages us, that brings us comfort when we sleep at night, but it also ought to stir us up like we've never been stirred up before. Because the reality is there's some folks out there that would receive Christ if a messenger would, would, would proclaim truth. Yes. Amen? And we are supposed to be that messenger. And we can't just throw our hands up and be okay with our communities going to hell. Amen. I'm not talking about, I'm not saying that in any sort of slang way, in any sort of trying to slip a, a, a bad word in the message sort of way. I'm, I mean, I'm not talking about even hell on earth. I'm talking about literal, we cannot be okay with the, the, the people, the, the, the brother, the fellow man uh, out there in our communities going to hell. We can't right. be okay with that. We can't throw our hands up and say, hey, well, you know what, at least we're secure. Buddy, I'm, I'm sure glad somebody didn't do that with me now. I was 23 years old. They could have, they could have said, hey, you know what? I'm going to just focus on the younger kids. And he's probably already too far gone. 23 years old. Amen. I've heard other folks getting saved at 40 and 50 and 60 and 70. Amen. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad folks just don't give up? Amen. All right. Bless you. Let me close. Uh, I, I think these, these verses, they, they, they've been challenging. It's always challenging because we don't have, I know that sometimes it's a point of contention, not amongst us, but uh, sometimes amongst others, uh, different places that are, uh, especially those that are preaching another Jesus. Uh, but, but they have stirred my soul. I mean, they've encouraged me, but they've also reminded me the importance of being busy for the Lord. Amen? And uh, he could return any moment, at any time. And when he comes, our work on, the, on earth is done. It's a relief. But it's also something that, uh, that 
it's ought to be in the back of our mind that when our work is done, that means nobody else is here to lead them to Christ. Amen? Right. And uh, so let us make sure that we are faithful in that which the Lord has called us to do. Amen? Let's make sure that as we go into this year, as we'll see, and I'll say, yeah, I'm not going to announce what the theme is, um, but what you will see, uh, I will say something in the vein of the new theme uh, for 2020. Uh, you're going to see that the, the importance of, of making sure that what we do is polished and first class uh, and, and, and to God, amen, and, and, and to his glory and to his honor uh, is, is going to be, it's, it's important, amen, and, and making sure that everything we do for the Lord uh, is, is, uh, is the way it's supposed to be, amen. And I'm trying not to say the words, and I'm trying not to use the words that, that's in it, I won't give it away. It's Wednesday, though, you guys got me, maybe I should tell you. Everybody else have to wait uh, a couple weeks before we get the banners in. But, um, but anyway, uh, get excited about that. Uh, amen. But uh, let's let's make sure that we are serving as God has called us to serve and be faithful to what the Lord has called us to do. Uh, and I mean, I'll tell you, it's important. He could come anytime. I mean, he could come anytime. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do love you. We thank you for your goodness to us. And we thank you for letting us be here tonight. And um, pray that you give us safety as we travel home tonight. I know the temperature drops. So roads will get slick in some spots. So I pray that you protect us and our wheels. Uh, we'll trash it tonight on the way home. And Father, as we enter this mission field, leave it tonight and turn in this mission field. Lord, I pray that you put people before us uh, that, uh, that are lost, that will be receptive, and then allow us, Lord, to have a burden in our heart for those lost you put in our way and put in our place uh, that we might be able to share with Christ with them. Uh, empower us, Lord, as we go out on this mission field. We pray. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.